Bismillah, alhamdulillah, salatu salam ala rasulillah. Our class today is about uh, section 2.3. How to get information from the graph of a function. I told you before, ya shabab, that uh, sections 2.1, 2.2, 2.3, they are almost the same. They are almost one section. Uh, let's remember, for example, 2.1, it was about what? Function. What, what we mean by a function? What is the definition of a function? How to find the domain? How to find the range for easy, uh, for simple functions? And what else? How to evaluate? Mainly how to evaluate. So in section 2.1, we have learned how to evaluate functions and how to find the domain, mainly. The difference quotient, if you remember, the net change, they are evaluating uh, skills. In section 2.2, what we have studied? Uh, how to define uh, the graph. How to sketch the graph of a function. It is about the graphing of function. How to know that it is a function or not from the graph or from the equation. Okay? And how to sketch the graph of this y is defined function. Today, we are still talking about the same issues, functions and graphs of functions. We will see today how to, if you have the graph, how to get the information from the graph. And in fact, when you have the graph, you have everything. Usually when we have uh, so many values of the functions, we can sketch the graph. Indeed, when we have the graph, we have all the values of the function. Uh, you can find also the domain from the graph. But most importantly, most importantly is the range. If you want to find the range, the best way to find the range is to sketch the graph. You can obtain the, graph, the range from the graph. Today also we will see together uh, the definition and the properties of increasing and decreasing functions. So let's start with uh, getting uh, information from the graph, getting the values of a function. Let's start with this application uh, problem or example. Uh, as engineers, uh, you will deal with a lot of data in the future. So you need to uh, under, understand how to interpret the, these data and how to uh, translate, to how to understand it, analyze, analyze it, of course. Uh, here, this graph on the right, it is for a, a function T, capital T, graphed in uh, figure one, it gives the temperature between noon and 6 p.m. At, at a certain weather station. Find T at one or T of one. What is T of one represent? Yes, but what does it represent? It equals to, this is if I'm asking you, what is the value of? What is it equal to? It is what? 25, all right. But what does, what does it represent? The temperature. The temperature? No. The temperature? No. T, T, T capital of one, who said the temperature? At, at, at 1 p.m. So here, the x-axis here, what are these numbers? These numbers are what? The hours from, from noon, from zero, from 12 to 6 p.m. And what is this uh, values represent? The temperature in Fahrenheit, okay? So T of one, it means the temperature at 1 p.m. What is the temperature at 1 p.m.? It is 25. So this is what we mean by getting information from the graph. T at three, the temperature at 3 p.m., the temperature at 5 p.m., and so on. Which is larger, T at two or T at four? The temperature at two or the temperature at four? Usually, of course, the temperature at two it is larger than, unless it is uh, uh, rainy or cloudy. And after, after that, it gets sunny. Find the values of X for which the temperature is equal to 25, which means at, at which time or at which hours the temperature will be 25? One, 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 at 1 p.m. and at, at 4, look, this is 25. So it is at 1 and at 4. Find the values for X uh, of X for which the temperature is greater than or equal to 25. From one to four, it is a, a period of time, an interval of time. 
from from one to to four. Good. The last uh, part find the net change in the temperature from one to three pm, which means how much how much the temperature has been changed. This is the meaning of net change. So how much it has been changed? What is the amount of exchange? It is the temperature at three minus the temperature at at one pm. So it is thirty minus one. It is five. So this is what you can understand from the net change. This is, by the way, 2.1. We have mentioned this in 2.1. Excellent, yes, Shabab. It is, uh, you, you enjoy, of course, when you allow, analyze the data that you have and when you understand what it gives you. Not only a mathematical notation or numbers, you will understand what is going on in the backstage. Now, the second part of this section is about uh, the range and the domain, how to obtain them from the graph. How to obtain them from the graph? It is so easy. Now, if you want to find the domain, you need to remember what is the domain? The domain is the all the possible values of X. So they are X values. So to, to know what is the domain, what you need to do, you need just to walk or to stand and walk. Stand and walk on the X axis. And look, look up and down. Wherever you can see the graph, you are in the domain. So if you are here, look up and down. Do you, have, do you see the graph? No. So you are not in the domain. So, but here, when you start uh, standing here, let me change the color because we have the same red color there. So if you are here, you are not. If you are, are here, you are starting. And now the, the graph starts here. So this is the beginning of the domain. Now, if you continue walking on the x-axis, you will find that the, 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 the graph is above you here. So until you get this point. So the, the, the interval from here to here will be the domain. In other, in other way, just look at the shadow. Imagine that you have a light here. Look at the shadow of the graph on the X axis. The, 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 the period that you will have the shadow of, of the graph on the X axis, it is what the domain. Similarly, if you want to find the range, remember the range is about what? The corresponding Y values, the corresponding Y values. So what you need to do to find the range from the graph, just stand on the Y axis, walk on this line, look right and left, wherever you will see the graph, it, you are in the range. So here, for example, look, not, nothing to the right, nothing to the left. So you are not in, in, in the range. This is not the range. You, the range will start here and it will continue uh, up to here. And of course, this will be the range. In other words, imagine that you have uh, the, the sun is here or you have a light here. So this will be the shadow and look at the of the graph on the Y axis. So easy. Again, the most important the domain, we know how to find the domain. It is not difficult. Now the range, you need to pay more attention how to find the range. The best way is to use the graph. Let's take an example. And this is an interesting and very important example in this course and in the uh, next course, Math 002. Y equals to square root of four minus X squared. So he said, sketch the graph of this one. Then he asked about the domain and the range. By the way, if he asked about the domain, you can find the domain. It is not difficult. What you will do to find the domain? Just but the radicands greater than or equal, you will have an inequality, non-linear inequality, quadratic inequality. Solve it, you will, you will be able to find the domain. Now, for the range, you may find it easy, but not all of you. But I'll give you here, I'll give you here a method that works with any type of this function. So now our target is to sketch the graph, not to, to find the domain and the range. How to do that? Of course, yeah, Shabab, one way is um, plotting points. It is the formal way. So, but here you have to be sure. Let, let's, let's play this game. Let's say, let's see. Let's see, uh, let's use the, the, X, uh, the X values. So this is X, this is Y. Who can give me some values of X? Of course, they should be from the domain. Negative two, for example. At negative two, negative uh, one, uh-huh. Zero. Zero, one, two. 
Okay, at zero, what do we have? What will be y? Will be two. At negative one? Square root of three. Also at, at one, it will be square root of three. At two? Zero, zero. Zero, why it is undefined? At negative two? Zero, zero. So are we sure now? Can we go and sketch the graph? Negative one, square At negative one, why? No. It will be negative one squared. So this is zero, this is one, this is two, this is negative one, this is negative two. Okay, at zero, it is two. Here. At one, it is square root of three, almost here. At two, it is zero. Mm, let's say here, I think at one, square three greater than one. I need to have the same scale. And this is, now these are the, the five points that I have. So what we can do? Connect them. Okay, let me connect them. Is it okay? Why? Why it should be curved? It is not linear. The reason it is not linear to draw a line. So this should be the answer. Okay. So it should be what? Curve. Uh-huh. This is curve. No, no, no. What, what, what is the problem? What is the problem? Why it is not correct? Who can show? Can you show me? You need to uh, uh, give me all the values between negative two and negative one to be sure about it. There is another reason for that. The degree, the degree of the polynomial. Can you see it is, you have what there, X squared. By the way, you need to wait until 2.6 to fully understand how to sketch the graph of, of uh, such function like this without, of course, square root I'm talking about. You will have X squared, then it is multiplied by what? By negative, then by four, then the squared. So it, this is not our story here. Just what I'm, what I'm trying to show you that uh, you will not be 100% sure. When I say 100% sure about your graph. But anyway, let me give you, it will be in some way like this, okay? So in fact, this way, blotting points in this case, it, it is not the best way. The best way to sketch the graph of this type of functions y equals square root of four minus x squared. The mother equation, you can call it like that. Why not? In fact, if someone told, uh, uh, told you that this function, the graph of this function, it is just the graph of the upper half of this circle. Are you going to be going to believe him? How to check that he's right? In fact, these equations, yes, Shabab, are not equivalent. Are they equivalent or not? They are not equivalent. Do you remember what I told you? That x squared, x squared equals nine, for example, and x equals three. They are not equivalent. This, this one has one solution. This one has two solutions. So they are not equivalent. They, you can go from one to another, but they are not equivalent. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay, so let's start with this one. X squared plus Y squared equals to four. What is this? What is this? It is a circle centered at? At the origin. So here it is. This is two, uh, it is in fact not a circle. Let's do it like this. I wish it is better than the previous one. Whatever it is not indeed. Let me move the axis itself. Now here we are, I think it is not bad. Now this is a circle centered at the origin with radius equals to what? To two. And let's now try to get this equation from here. So let's start from X squared plus Y squared equals to four. In fact, what you will get, if you start from here, what you will get? You will square both sides and it will, you will get four minus x squared and then you will uh, uh, move x squared to this side so you will have x squared plus y squared but yeah Shabab, uh, this is not a function this one is it a function no this it is a circle so this is also confirmed that they are not equivalent equation this equation it is for function it is function but this one is not for a function so this also shows that they are not equivalent so what is the benefit of what we did? We can know the range. No, not the range. 
it is not a function. So how, what we can do now, the question or just you need to notice that there is a, a relationship between this, between the graph of this function and the graph of the circle. How? Go back to the circle, solve it for what? Solve it for y. What you will do? You will take the square root of both sides. Then you will get the absolute value of y equals to square root, which means that y is positive or negative, the square root of four minus. Now this equation is equivalent to this equation. Exactly, they are the same. In fact, this, this says that the equation of x squared plus y squared equals to four. In fact, it is a combination of two equations. The first equation, it is y equals square root of four minus x squared. The second one is y equals negative square root of four minus x squared, right? Where is our function? Which one is our function? This is our function. Y is here positive or negative? Y here is greater than zero. And here, let's say greater than or equal indeed. And here it is what? Listen, then here it is greater than or equal. It can be zero. What, what we are talking about when y is greater than zero? We are above or below the x-axis? So this is above the x-axis. And here we are what? Below. So our, our function that we are looking for is this one. Here it is, this one. So it is where it is above or on the x-axis. So it is this one. It is this part from the circle. It is this part. So what we will do, Ya Shabab, we, if we want to sketch the graph of this one, here it is. This is the graph of our function, which is the upper half of this circle or a semicircle. It is a semicircle. If you want to sketch the graph with negative, you will choose the negative, the blue bar, the, 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 the lower bar, the lower half of the circle. Now from here, you can easily decide about the domain and the range. What is the domain? This is the domain. Closed, negative two and two. For the range? The range about the y values from the range is from zero closed up to where? Up to two. If it was like this, now you can generalize. What about if it is negative square root of four minus X squared? It will be the, the lower semicircle, the lower half of the circle. The same domain, the, same domain the change will be in what? And look, Shabab, when we just consider one, one half, it will be one to one. Yeah, Muhammad, one to one function. Uh, sorry, uh, it will be a function. Okay, for people that are preparing for zero, zero, two, it is not one to one. So to be one to one function, you need to have it on one quadrant, a quarter of the circle. Okay, can we generalize what we have learned from this example? How to generalize this? Wash your face. Okay, now to generalize a shabab, when you have y equals square root of a squared minus x squared. This will be either the upper half, which of course I'm talking here only about the upper half, but when we have here plus or minus, it will be either the above, the uh, upper or the uh, lower part of the circle. So if you have a function like this, the graph will be a semicircle with radius equals to what? To A. In our case, A squared, it is four, A is two. And the domain will be what? Negative A to A and the range from zero to A in general, okay? Whatever he gave you, four or nine or 16 or 25, it's the same idea. But be careful, be careful. Don't generalize this or try this. For example, if you have y equal x squared minus four, don't do this. Why? This is not an equation of a circle. It is not barred from equation of a circle. It is a barred from an equation of, who can, who can know each other? Who knows? Hyperbola. Do you remember hyperbola? Yes, it is apart from hyperbola. It will be hyperbola. Okay, this is not our subject. We will not focus on this type at, at the moment. So uh, I think it is enough. We had enough. Look, if you have the graph, how to find the domain and the range. 
Now let's talk about increasing and decreasing. What we mean by increasing function and decreasing function. The function is said to be increasing if its graph is rising up. And it called, it is called decreasing if it is fall, it is falling down. Okay. So when it is going up like this, this is increasing. When it is going down like this, it is what? Decreasing. Of course. Um, so like, let, let's, let's have a look at this. This function here. What is going on from A small to B small? It is increasing. It, it increases. Increases. You can use the verb or the adject adjective. Now, uh, from B to C, it is decreasing. And from C to D, look here. When we say increasing or decreasing relative to the X values, to the intervals on the X axis, OK? Mathematically, yes. What do you call this? It's not increasing or decreasing? Constant. And this will happen if it is horizontal, like this. We will mention this in the next slide. Now, this is geometrically, Shabab. Algebraically, how to know that the function is increasing and decreasing? By the way, we will not focus uh, on the algebraic way in this course. You may consider it in uh, Math 101, Math 101. Not all the graphs can you find the slope. The slope when you have a linear, when you have a line. Also, Math 101, you will learn how to find the slope of any curve at a specific point, not only for lines. Uh -huh. Yes, it is related to the derivatives. Now, mathematically, Shabab, this one increasing or decreasing? Decreasing. This one? Decreasing. Look mathematically what is going on. If, we, if you consider two numbers or two x values, x1 and x, here x1 is less than x2. Clear? Why? x1 is to the left. It is. It is less than x2 because it is to the left of it. So we have x1 less than x2. Look at the value of the function at x1, which is y1. And the value of the function at x2, which is y2, which is f of x2. Which one is bigger, which one is smaller? x1 less than x2. Also, f of x1 is less than f of x2. So this is what? Increasing. We can note, uh, denote it like this. But look here x1 is less than x2 but what is what about the value of the function at x1 here about this one here the value of the function at x1 it is bigger than so here it is reversed the inequality sign has been reversed from less than to greater than excellent not always it is not easy Yes, you, it, is, it is risky. You have to be sure about that. No need. In this course, you will be able to, fire, to decide about decreasing and increasing functions from, from their graph, from the graph. If you want to know if it is increasing or decreasing, sketch the graph. This, is, this will answer your question. This is increasing. This one what? And this is what? When you have x1, less than x2 but what f of x1 equals to f of x2 the easier way to decide about the increasing or decreasing function it is to ask yourself this question what this is x-axis what walk imagine that you are walking on the x-axis ask yourself what does y this is y what does y do as x goes from left to right. So when we, this is the direction, Shabab. When you go from left to right, if X is, if, if Y is going up, this is what? If X is going down, decreasing. So go from the left to the right. Again? It is not a function. We are talking about increasing. Increasing and decreasing function. It is not a function. What you can say about this x equals to five? Increasing, increasing and decreasing function. It should be to be a function at the beginning. 
Okay, who can tell me about this? Uh, let's start with you. Tell me about it. Me? Yes, talk about it. Describe it. Analyze it. Uh, the first line is. Uh... It is uh, not first line. It is a function. It is one function here, but it has it is b's lies defined function. So. Uh, are you asking about the domain? Tell me about it. Whatever. Look at it and tell me about it. Negative infinity mm -hmm. to one. Mm -hmm. uh, no, negative infinity to positive infinity. Yeah. What is what is it? What you are talking about? The domain? Yes. Okay. I didn't ask about it. In fact, we are talking about increasing and decreasing, but it's okay. Thank you. Now tell me about where it is increasing, where it is decreasing. Mm -hmm. Then uh, from where to where? From uh, negative infinity to one. From negative infinity to one, you are right. Yes. It is decreasing. Then, then it stopped uh, increasing. From from one to three. Right. Then it stopped to be constant. After that, it is constant. You are right. Excellent. Good job. Now it is decreasing on the interval negative infinity to one and increasing on one and three, constant on three to infinity. What about this one? The next one, please. It's uh, increasing, it's decreasing from negative infinity to uh, zero. Then to, it's increasing from zero to infinity. You are right. You are right. Okay. Um, by the way, Shabab, uh, if sometimes you can see that it is open or closed, of course, I prefer to use this way. If it is included, if it is included open, uh, uh, if it is included closed, if it is not included or what, open. But if your answer here was like this, it is correct also. Why? We are not, we are not talking about the domain and the range here. Why it would be true also if you consider like this? Uh, yes, increasing and decreasing, it is not a local property. It is something at a specific point. No, it is something that you need to compare with, uh, with uh, other points from on intervals. It is a non-local property can be described over interval. So tell me about increasing and decreasing from a point to an another point, not at specific. We don't say it is increasing at one point and decreasing at other points. No, this is not uh, the case. So if you found that in some questions, or some examples, it is open as you, in your textbook, it's okay. Like here, I think we have one here. Find the domain and the range. How to get the range and domain from the graph? Clearly, the domain is what? Oh, wow. The domain, this is the x axis, it is all the real numbers. So it is all the real numbers from negative infinity to infinity. The range, oh, uh, the y, this is the y axis. So it starts from where? Zero open or closed? No, no. Is y, how to know? Is y equals to zero? Yes. yes, here it is. It is not open. So it is from closed zero to infinity. Now it is clearly from negative infinity to zero, decreasing and increasing from where? From zero to infinity. Open or closed? It doesn't matter. If I personally, I prefer to include it because it is in the domain. Okay, if it is not in the domain and you include it, it is wrong. If it is not in the domain, it should be also not in the, it should be open, not in the uh, um, intervals of increasing and decreasing. Now let's summarize. Do you mean the domain or the range? I'm talking about increasing and decreasing. No, I mean, you said it's in the domain, it is included. Included when you talk about increasing and decreasing. Of course, if it is in the domain, you will include it in the domain. If it is included in the range, you will include it. I told you, Shabab, that these three sections, 2.1, 2.2, 2.3, they are almost one section. We can combine them, and we this is what we did. We connect them to be one section indeed. So let's summarize now what we have learned so far in these three sections. This function, it is the most well-known linear function. It is not a constant. The identity. Why they call it identity function? Because what is y here? Y is 
So they are identical. Y and X here, they are identical. So we have here identity function. What is the domain of this function? You can put X to be any real number. And what about the range? Also all the numbers. Just remember the graph. Look how the this graph of this function looks like. One, one, two, two, three, three. And it is increasing always over its, its entire domain. And it is continuous also over uh, its entire domain. The second function, squaring function. Domain, all real numbers. Range, non-negative real numbers. From zero closed to infinity. This is the graph. Decreases before zero, increases after zero. Continuous everywhere, continuous over its entire domain. Uh, the cubing function, x to the power three, domain, domain oh, any polynomial, Shabab, the domain of any polynomial is what? Oh, All real numbers. And this is why you like, you will like, and if you don't like, you will like them, the polynomials. They are defined everywhere, continuous, differentiable, uh, integrable. Yeah. If you can do whatever you wish that all the functions are polynomials. So the polynomial functions are defined everywhere. So the domain is all the real numbers. What about the range? All the real numbers. If, you're, if you are not sure, you can sketch the graph and you will be sure about the range. Uh, increasing or decreasing or mix between them. It is always increasing. This kind of functions, they call them monotonic. It is always, the, it, it doesn't change it, its mind. It is always increasing, okay? It's continuous. Uh, the square root function, the domain, you have, uh, you have square root, even radical. So what is inside the radicand must be non-negative. So it is from zero close to infinity. The range, the same, it will be the same. If you are not sure, sketch the graph. And you will realize that the range is from zero, lock y. y is starting from zero to where? From zero to infinity, the same as x. Increasing or decreasing? It is decre increasing. So you can use the verb also increases or is, in, is increasing. The cubic root function. The real number, the domain range, all the real numbers also, and this is the graph. And of course, it is also what? De uh, increases always, not decreases. Increases always, the continuous always over its domain, which is all the real numbers. The absolute value function, the domain is all the real numbers. You can find the absolute value for any real number, but the range is only the non-negative numbers from zero to infinity. This is the graph of this function. Increases or decreases or what? Decreases, decreases before zero. Increases after continuous over its entire domain. The greatest integer function, domain, all real numbers, range, all integers, all integers. Um, this is the graph. What about increasing, decreasing? It is constant between every two integers and discontinuous at every at every integer, right. Okay, now these are some solved exercises for you to practice, to sketch the graph and then find the domain and the range. Um, the summary of this section is here. And there are a here additional, what I call them, call them additional exercises with the final answer. So in, indeed, most of them, they, they were uh, old recitation exercises for uh, like uh, before two or three years from now uh, because we keep up updating the, the recitation exercises so these are uh, where all recitation exercises practice by solving these exercises and then check your solution uh, where is uh, we need a recitation where, where are the recitation exercises I think this is the first one which is a tricky one which one of the following is true about the graph of the adjacent function? Go over them one by one. Only one, which one is true, which means that you, there is only one true. What about the first one? 
Do, do you need a graph to, to decide about the first one? Is it uh, true or false? No, no. Without a graph, it's a it makes no sense. How it can be increasing from zero to two? And it is decreasing always. This is impossible. Without a graph, this is false. What about B? Without a graph also, it is, it is not possible. How it can be increasing on uh, zero and two interval and decreases from zero to infinity. Zero and two, it is included from zero to infinity. So also B, B is not possible. It makes no sense. Let's talk about C. C increasing from negative infinity to zero. No. Here it is. It is decreasing. Don't don't continue even. Don't continue. It is just from here. It is clearly wrong. So we left up with the final one, the last one, which means true. Let's let's check. Maybe we did a mistake. Increasing from zero to two. This is zero. This is two. Right. And decreasing from negative infinity to zero, right? And from two to infinity, decreasing also, yes. So the answer is D. Now let's sketch the graph of this function. Please, Yashabab, in your notebook, sketch the graph of this function, and then we will get try to get the information, all the possible information from the graph. Sketch the graph of this B is Y is defined function. This is a combination of 2.1 and 2.2 and 2.3 at the same time. Remember what we did yesterday in the uh, section 2.2 when we sketched the graphs of uh, piecewise defined functions. Don't be afraid from the absolute value in the first branch. It's okay. Why? Because let's recall together what is the absolute value of x? It is either x or negative. It is x if x is non-negative. And it is negative x if x is negative. So what do you think? x is less than negative 2. So what? So x is less than 0, for sure. It is, in fact, less than, since it is negative, it is less than negative 2, so it is less than 0. So instead of the absolute value of x, what we will do, right? We will just write negative x minus one. This is the function. The function will be like this. So easy. No, no, no more absolute value in the question. Now, what you will do? You will go to the x y plane. Where where can I sketch the graph for you? Let's do it here. Now, what are the most important points that you should start with? Negative two and two negative two and two, why? Because they are the branching point, look. They are here. So this is negative one, this is one, and this is zero. Then when X is less, let's, let's, talk, let's take the, the first branch. X is less than negative two. You can uh, use a table of values as, as I told you, as a helper. Now, when X is negative two, what it, both x equals negative two, but let, let it what open. Open. What you will get if you both x equals to negative two? It will be negative. Negative two minus one, it will be? It will be one. So at negative two, it is one. But what? Open. open. Now, take any value less than negative two, like what? Negative, negative three. What you will get? When x is, is negative three, you will get what? Negative, negative three minus one, which is what? Three minus one, it is two. So it will be two. This is two, this is three, so it will be here. Look at the function, negative x minus one. What is this? Y equals to negative x minus one. This is a line. So how many points we need to draw a line? Two points. This is one, the open is one, and this is the another one, connect them. And here we are, check. The slope of this line, negative or not? It makes sense if it is like this? Yes, it makes sense. So this is a kind of verification. Next one. So we are done with the first part, the first branch, the, the first piece of the graph of this piecewise defined function. Now let's go to the second branch. Negative two, we will put now negative two what? Closed, negative two closed. What we will get? Negative four minus, it will be minus five. 
negative five, right? Yeah. So when we have negative two, we have negative five. Let's say this is negative five, negative five, closed. Here we are. Now, what about two at two, the, 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 the right end point? At two, but we will put two here, what? We will two open. At two open, what we get? The same. At two also, it is but open this time. I have seen one of your colleagues, they connect this point and this point, and that's it. No, look at it. It is, uh, this means that it is y, y equals to negative five. This is not true. So you need to have uh, more points. You have to be more sure about that. So you need to add more points. So let's add what, for example, zero, one, negative one. You can add more points. When X is zero, what you will get? Negative one. When X is one? No, negative two. When it is negative one, negative two also. So at zero, it is negative one. Let's say here. At one, it is what? Negative two. Let's see here and here. And now how to connect? Don't connect them like this. Because it is not linear. Look at this. It is not linear. It is quadratic. So it is kind of curved. So if you want to connect them, connect them with a curvy, a curvy graph like this. But how to make sure that it is like this? For example, some may say why it is not like this, for example. It may, it may do, this is a point, so it may be like this. Why it, it is not going to do this? You will study more about this in chapter three. We will know that from chapter three, why it cannot be do, do that. And also more and more in math 101. Indeed, it will be like this, but in fact, we will not wait until 002 or uh, Math 101. We will study it just next week when we study section 2.6. You know how to sketch the graph of y equal x squared, right? Yes. Here it is. Now, what about y equal negative x squared? What will happen? It will be reflected in the x-axis. It will be like this. If you are not good with this, we, you will uh, understand it next week. Now, when you have y equal to negative x squared minus 1, what will happen? Shifted it will be shifted down at negative two and it will be uh, at negative one. It will be something like this. And here we are. These are called transformations of fun graphs. Okay, so we sketch the graph of this function. Now we are left now with the easier part, the last part. Both x equals to two, what you will get? It will be three. This is three and it will be closed. What about any number after two, like three, for example, like four? Also three, 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 so connect them, it is a constant. And here we are, this is the graph of our function. Let me show you the graph in a bigger scale or in a nicer way, better than my handwriting. Now, uh, let's get the information now from the graph. What is the domain and the range of this function? The domain is all the real numbers, are you sure about that? No problem at negative two? What is the value of the function at negative two? Here it is. It is here. If, if, if both of them were open, it will not be defined at negative two. Good. So no problem after that. At two, no problem. It is uh, above and so on. So the domain is all the real numbers from negative infinity to infinity. What about the range? Who can, uh, please, please, the range. Tell me about the range. Yes. The range. The range, yes, think about y value. The range is not strange, okay? All the negative. I'm standing here now. Look, let me use another color. Let me uh, use. I'm at negative six now, look, I'm here. I'm looking right and left, I cannot see the graph. So I'm not in the domain, I'm not in the range. So what we have agreed, Shabab, just look at the shadow of the graph. Can you have a shadow on the y-axis here? Where is the graph here? No more, no, no graph to the right, to the right, to the left. So the domain or the, uh, the range, why I'm talking about the domain? The range starts from where? I'm asking specific student, yes. From negative five, closed or open? At negative five, it is closed here. So it is included. Y, y is equal to negative five. Good, up to where? Continue. So I'm asking specific students here, Shabab. Yes. Up to uh, negative one. Up to negative one. Closed or open negative one? Uh, 
inclu included because y is there is no hole here. Continue. What about after negative one? Open. One. Open. There is nothing here. We have a gap here. Look, there is no graph to the right or to the left. Look at the right and the left of you are walking on the y axis. So, union from where to where? From uh, one. One open or closed? No open. Open because there is the y cannot be one. There is no x, by the way. No x here will give you y equals to one. Check that. Okay, up to where? What about three? There is no problem at three. Three is included, four is included because this graph will continue like this forever. So up to where? Up to infinity. All right, you did it. Excellent. Now, uh, what is the value of the function at negative three? In which branch you will uh, substitute? In which piece? The first piece. So it will be? It will be? Two, right. If at four over three, four thirds in the second piece, and it will be negative 25 over nine. What is F at by? Three. Three. Now, uh, find X intercepts. No X intercepts. The Y intercept? Negative one. Where it is increasing? Decreasing. Stop. One by one, one by one. Decreasing from negative infinity to one? Hello, guys. From negative infinity to one? No. We, it should be uh, in intervals on the x-axis. So it is from negative infinity to where? To negative two decreasing. Increasing from negative five to negative one? No. No. From negative two to what? Yeah. To zero, it is decreasing, increasing, increasing, and then decreasing from where? Zero. From zero to two. Closed or open, it doesn't matter. And when we talk about increasing and decreasing, just it should be open if it is not in the range. After two, ya shabab, it is a constant. That's it. This is all what we have. I was preparing this question for you to solve, uh, but unfortunately, the time is not enough. We will stop here.